Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some very special magic cards. And these magic cards, I'll read you the announcement. You can only get these magic cards if you are a super fan of Magic Gathering and you purchased a free day adult ticket for $600, plus tax of course. Uh, so welcome to a, an unbelievable opportunity for a special experience featuring Magic's past, present, and future. Get two iconic Masters advanced release events, a trio of exciting Magic cards from the 2017 Hascon collection. Okay, so let's stop there. The trio of exciting Magic cards from the 2017 Hascon collection. The Magic cards are confirmed to be silver, and they will have crossovers. The two crossovers I can think of are Transformers, and most importantly, my Little Pony. My Little Pony is extremely popular uh, for some subsets of Magic players. I see playmats all the time. This card, if they do a crossover where it's a My Little Pony Magic the Gathering card, this card is going to be insanely crazy valuable. Now, you would think that this has not happened in the past before, right? Giving exclusive cards only at conventions. It actually happened one time, and I remember it very well because there was a firestorm around this card. And the card wasn't even good, but the card was given out at Dragon Con. It created a atmosphere where people paid lots of money. It was not, you, you could probably do a trade, two of these Dragon cards for a Power 9 at the time because it was a long time ago. And many people were upset because they couldn't go to Dragon Con to get this exclusive Dragon card. And back then people were trying to make a Dragon collection, right? It's not like today where it's all about price, 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 price. Back then it was about, oh, cool, I have a dragon collection, I want to make it complete. But then there's this random dragon that I will never be able to get my hands on until they mass printed it. They mass printed the card in a magazine. So a lot of you don't know about this because it is very old and it's not something that many people remember and it's not something that Wizard of Coast will promote openly, but this is, reminded me when they said free exclusive cards of either this card is going to be really, really expensive or it's going to be reprinted somewhere down the line. So let's talk about that card. Uh, it is a dragon, not, not even going to try to pronounce this name. Uh, creature dragon <laughs> has flying and banding and that's about it. It's a 1-1. One, one. I, I kid you not, that is pretty much it. It does have an additional fire breathing effect but it's not the best card but it is a dragon and if you look at that symbol it's a very unique symbol the symbol is only found on this one card because you can only get it at one time at dragon con the card is now practically worthless but had it remained as limited as it did i believe it will be as much as zodiac dragon right now it would be the American version of Zodiac Dragon. And if you don't know what Zodiac Dragon is, I would check it up online because you will be surprised of its... It's not the best card. It's not an okay card. But the main reason it's so much money is due to the fact that no one has it. Now, let's talk about this dragon. This card was created as a giveaway for the Dragon Con convention in 1994. How old was I back then? Mm, 13, we'll get 13, 17, I was seven, no, was I 17? No, that doesn't make sense. I was like seven? Anyway, regardless of how old I was, oh, I was seven, yeah. Hence the dragon expansion symbol. It was also distributed in the Duelist number three, and this is what pissed so many of these people off. And they actually mentioned it in this article. This article was uh, written in 2003, but I remember in 1995, it was like, oh, wait, it's an exclusive mythic dragon card. And at that time, you don't know if it's good or not. Like you're like, wow, it gives people, it makes, what it was, was it made the creature that you banned it with look like a dragon, which was really cool because everyone had their uh, favorite creatures. Mine was Panther Warriors. I was like, wait, it's like, it, it makes Panther Warriors a dragon. Oh, that's awesome. But much to the annoyance of people that paid, traded heavily for them after Dragon Con. We're talking about 
this card going from like free, which it was, to a couple hundred dollars, which in 1994, if you invested in like Apple or Microsoft, whatever the hot tech internet tech stock was at the time, you would have made, maybe it was IBM, you would have made a ton of money. So with inflation, we're talking about enough money to easily buy Power 9 even today. So not only is it the smallest dragon made, it's a 1-1, it has a very out of flavor ability of banding. Yes. Essentially, the whole point was it made your non-dragon creature a dragon. And that was very, very cool. So, will the Hascon promos be like this, where initially it would be just really expensive and then drop into oblivion? Or will that be something else? Or will they reprint it after much demand? We will see in time. But I just thought I would mention that because probably not many people remember I played Magic since I was five. Like, since I was five. I've been playing Magic the Gathering. And I remember that being a huge event that, like, I would talk to my friends at school about. And, like, oh, you know, I'm going to get this Dragon card. It was the huge event, meaning that we all knew about it. And everyone wanted to say, like, it was kind of a race to see who could get it first. And then it popped out of a magazine. <laughs> so it was like, okay, whatever. Okay, back on to the other cards that we're going to talk about. Harbringer of the Night. Uh, just like what I said, I mean, there's going to initially you will have the really obvious spikes like Devoted Druid, you will have the Blowfly Infant Station, the other ones in Shadowmoor. Then you will have some unique ones which are older, like Harbringer of the Night. During your upkeep, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature. You can see why this is so good because, I mean, if you. Put minus one, minus one creature, uh, counters on creatures, you can get snakes using the snake commander. And you can get tons and tons of snakes. And then you can repeat it because you can put the minus one, minus one counters on snakes. And it goes well. Uh, the next is Doom Day, Doomsday. Uh, these effects are very niche, but they're very powerful and unique. When looking to hold on or buy some cards... You always want to buy unique abilities, and you want to buy something they, uh, they cannot really reprint or make more powerful. Doom Day is one of them. It's in a unique legacy deck named after Doom Day. I always like when the deck is named after the card that spikes, because the card is the namesake of the deck. I like it. Uh, six edition was not a great edition for uh, value. I don't believe that's that much value in the set. So when you look at an older set, and you talk about, hmm, this set is very old. No one really wants it. As long as it keeps getting older, eventually some of the cards have to become valuable due to scarcity, right? Even if demand is not very high, if supply is ever decreasing because collections do get destroyed, collections do get lost, collections, um, especially older collections. And that's it. I mean, Doomsday is a great card. I think it's very good and it should continue on with prices. Now, let's talk about time. Understanding time and rotation and things of that nature is very important. Commander 2016, the next two cards I'm going to show you, the last two cards I'm going to show you have gone up in price. As if you can, if you watch more of these videos, you will know that a lot of Commander 2016 cards have also gone up in price. It's time. Right before Commander 2017 is released in August, Commander 2016 cards will go up, up in price because it's out of print and people really want the product now. They are thinking, oh, this is my last opportunity to get these cards. Now, Lurking Predator is not, I believe this is a reprint. Um, I'm almost positive it's a reprint with the same exact artwork. It's a beautiful artwork in foil. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a reprint. It's not a super great card. However, the fringe cards are now starting to go up. So in the beginning, you had those unique cards that are unique to the commander decks, like Conqueror's uh, Flail, for instance. That card is going like crazy. The commanders, uh, the Brea and her friends. Now, what you have is more friends playable cards start going up and they're ticking up and ticking up and ticking up and they will continue to do, to do so until the release of Commander 2017 in August. Here's another one, Christine Crawler. 
Uh, it is a okay card, but is it $4 when you can buy it in multiple? I believe you can get a multiple pre-con decks. Uh, it's not just in one of those decks. So once Commander 2017 releases, people, it, assuming it's a good set, people will be re very interested in that set, and that will be the Tribal. So the, the Zombies Tribe, the Goblin Tribe, I'm assuming it's Zombies, Goblins, Merfolks, some other tribes. Whatever tribes they choose will again, then continue to go up because then people go, oh, I want to buy this ED8 deck, but now I need to buy these additional cards. And that is the cycle of Commander. Uh, it has a very established buy cycle and sell cycle. Right now, it is the time to sell because these cards are going to be at the highest they will be at for some time. Commander 2017, should it be tribal, and it is, is not going to promote these this type of mechanic where it's convergence, right? Tribals are generally one or two colors. Anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.